Hi everybody, welcome to week four. Um, this week we are going to jump from working on corrective glamour makeup straight to old age makeup. And when I say old age, I'm talking about individuals probably 70 to 100, right? Advanced age. People that have lived, right? Um, we will absolutely um, revert backwards after this module. We have two weeks of old age, uh, and then we will tackle middle age. Why do I do that? I generally think it's easier for young designers to see the extremes of um, corrective glamour, what is the beautiful full color version of yourself, um, and what is advanced age. Um, they're kind of the two ends of the spectrum. I think it's easier for students to translate the harshness of old age um, and then start working on the subtleties of middle age. So this tutorial is just giving you an idea of how to create um, beautiful makeup renderings using uh, your research images. And so by now you should have unmasked uh, a lot of images, at least 500, right, uh, for your makeup file or makeup morgue. Um, and among those, of course, should be old age or advanced age. Um, I have also included several examples that you're welcome to use um, in this module. This is one of those examples. Um, you can use one of the examples that I've given you for this exercise or uh, feel free to use your own. Generally, I like to print in black and white uh, when I'm working on this kind of exercise just because for me it's easier to see the, the dark and the light. Um, this certainly works with a color photograph as well. So um, I like this, this little old man. I think he's super cute and I think he has a lot of life uh, etched in his face. You can see that uh, he obviously has spent a lot of time in the sun um, and he has lived life. So very much in the way that we created our um, personal face chart, um, we are going to use this image to create a makeup map um, for our old age uh, makeup rendering. So I'm going to slide this into um, a non-glare sheet protector. They seem to work a little better with this camera to not give you that super glare. Um, and so very much in the way uh, we did our personal makeup charts, we're just going to use um, a, uh, a dry erase marker, and we're gonna trace around the face like so, just to give us the shape, right? And then we're gonna go in and using our marker, gonna start to denote the highlights and shadows that we love. So again, I use sort of lines to denote shadow and dots to denote highlight. You can choose however you want to um, denote uh, your highlight and shadow. So I'm just gonna copy the nose here. It looks like he's got a pretty severe bulbous nose. We want a lot of highlight there, right? And I love all these wrinkles and lines. We're just gonna copy those to give us a good idea and so on and so forth. These nasolabial folds, there's a darkness there. Obviously we're gonna shadow and then we're gonna see some highlight here. There's some shadow here and so on and so forth. And just tracing through all of these lines, he's got these great cheekbones here with some severe shadow and lots of highlight here, right? Real nice, and so on and so forth. You just keep going through, there's a lot of darkness under his eye. Tracing all of those, those uh, wonderful features until, I'll give you this, it's like a cooking show. I have one prepared. The glare, glare is kind of not great, but you get the idea that I've gone through and I've marked out all of the features that I want to, um, I want to use in my in my design. So now what? Now um, you can actually take this out of the sheet protector and you will end up with something that looks kind of like that, right? A little scary, but um, by now this should start to make sense to you as a designer, right? We know where the highlight is, we know where the shadow is, and from this um, dry erase drawing, you're going to translate this onto your makeup chart, right? And there's going to be a little bit of artistic interpretation in this step, because obviously this man's hand was um, up against his face, right, creating shadows that are not necessarily natural shadows. So you have to start to make some decisions about what you want to keep and what you can discard. And so you can see how I've used, I've used the blank make, makeup chart just because we're going to be um, creating this on our cosmetology head. Um, and I've denoted all of the highlight and shadows, right? And I've just essentially decided what I want to keep, what I want to avoid. So take your, um, your dry erase rendering, 
transfer it artistically onto your basic makeup chart, both front and side view, right? Now you have a pretty clear idea of, of you know, what you're doing. You can then translate that into a beautiful color rendering, right? So all of these steps are really important, and I'm going to want you to uh, show me uh, your process on this uh, in, in this week's assignment. But hopefully this gives you a really great way to um, to use all of the images that you're creating and physically transfer those features onto your makeup rendering, okay? Um, usually when we're creating um, old age and we're talking about bases, highlights, and shadows, the bases I like to use um, are generally lighter and uh, a little more uh, sallow feeling. Uh, the skin starts to lose its collagen and its elasticity as we get older. So um, I would probably go about using a lighter base um, just to create uh, a canvas for this particular rendering. So I hope this is helpful. Um, please, you can always reach out to me with questions or um, you know, clarification. Grace has created a lovely video uh, tutorial on uh, creating this design on your cosmetology head. So have fun. I'm super proud of all of the work you've been doing so far um, and have a great week.